Hi again everybody, these are the video notes for the book of Philippians. Paul's letter to the Philippians is a great place to turn in this season. Paul was locked down in prison when he wrote this letter and it is filled with practical advice and this letter shows us how he was living in prison. And if we take Paul's advice, we discover how we can live in this lockdown season. And whether you're working in an essential service or at home, here's how Paul tells you to live your life. Number one, choose joy. He says that 16 times in four short chapters. Secondly, live out humility and self-forgetfulness in all your friendships, relationships and marriages. Thirdly, learn to live forwards, have a goal and work towards that goal, even in lockdown. Fourthly, and the, the one that we're going to look at today, don't let anxiety beat you up. And fifth and finally, have an I can do attitude, but we'll look at that one next week. Today's insight is really important. Don't let anxiety beat you up. Of course, that's easier said than done for most people. And surely Paul was feeling anxiety at this time. He's locked up in prison with the threat of execution hanging over him. And speaking from this place, he writes in chapter 4 and verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here's how Paul dealt with his daily anxiety. Firstly, he knew God is near. He says in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. God is with us, but we must believe. Remember, Paul is writing this from prison. He's facing execution. These are not fake words. This is an intentional choice that he's making. And daily anxiety or dealing with daily anxiety involves intentional daily choices. And our first choice is to believe that God is with us. God is near. You can say, I can't see what God is doing here. But you can't say God is not here. That's unbelief. The Lord is near. And therefore, because He is near, you can and should rejoice always. The second thing that Paul does is he turns his worry into worship. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Rejoicing, joy, praise, worship, these build the throne of God in our lives. We build the throne and God comes to sit on it. In the dark night of the soul, we need to keep building the throne. As we build the throne, we change the atmosphere around our souls. Isaiah 61 reminds us that a garment of praise crushes the spirit of heaviness. Joy displaces darkness. Now this is what Paul did. And then he goes further, he turns that anxiety, that worry into prayer. It says in the scripture, do everything by prayer and petition. Prayer and petition is an exchange. We exchange this reality for another one. We are saying to God, this is what it is, but I am trusting you for what it can be. And then he goes on to say, with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a posture. We please God by telling Him that we trust Him before we see the outcome. And that was the way Paul turned worry into worship. The third way that Paul deals with his anxiety is to place the God of peace on his heart. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now here's something really important. Don't intellectually wrap your brain around this verse. This is a doing verse. This is the active part of how we deal with anxiety. We do it, the rejoicing and the prayers, and then God does the guarding of our hearts and minds with peace. Now Paul didn't suddenly get released from prison just because he did these steps. 
And equally, the nature of our circumstances which are causing us anxiety may not change. But the peace comes when we settle ourselves under the hand of God. This is what Paul did. This is what Jesus did. And this is what we need to do. And finally, have a look at this verse from Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my right up with my righteous right hand. You need to learn this verse off by heart and practice it. Have a look at it. There are two do nots in this verse. Do not fear and do not anxiously look around you. Now for both those do nots there is an I am. For I am with you. I am your God. Both I am's are in the present tense. They still apply to our lives today. You could say that one I am should have been enough because God said it. But I am, God himself, gives you a double. So why fear if I am is with you? And it goes on. Then there are three I wills. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you. And just to re reinforce the I wills, he begins it with three surely's. He adds emphasis. Surely I am with you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you. In other words, you can really count on God. So let's summarize this. Two do nots, two I ams, three I wills, and three surely's. And so for the two do nots, which is the part we must play, there are six commitments from God to intervene in our life. You know what Corrie Ten Boom said? Worry is like a rocking chair. It keeps you busy, but it does not get you anywhere. So as you come into this study today, don't let anxiety beat you up. We're going to do a study around this verse from Philippians 4 and also from the Isaiah 1. And then we're going to conclude today's meeting of our church that's meeting in our homes with communion. And I trust God will bless you with such peace which guards your hearts and your minds.